Hey everybody, it's your old friend Dan Harris back here to talk a little football for the 2021 season. Today we're going to be talking about 10 players who gain value in PPR formats. All right, starting at number 10, it's JD McKissick. If you were in a standard format, McKissick would have finished as the number 34 running back last year. So in other words, a weak flex option. But in a PBR format, he finished as the number 17 running back, so a solid RB2 option. It's players like him that epitomize why you need to understand your league format going into a draft. Now, McKissick is not going to be a star this year in PBR formats, especially with fewer targets to go around in Washington. But it's the difference between a potential flex option there versus basically being unusable in standard or even half PBR formats. Next up is Cooper Cup. Cup is ranked in the top 10 in the league among receivers with 94 and 92 receptions respectively over the past two seasons, so it's not exactly a surprise that he's a better PPR option than he is in other formats. Now you might think that this year could be a little different, as Matthew Stafford is bound to throw the ball down the field more often, which could lead to fewer overall pass attempts and receptions for the wide receivers. That is possible. But Cup should play in the slot at least half the time this season. That's the most valuable position on the field for a wide receiver. So he should still be that middle of the field and safe option for Matthew Stafford. So for the most part, you can probably pencil him in for his typical 125 or more targets, 90 or more receptions, and strong PPR value. Next up, let's talk about an old standby in James White. If ever there were a poster boy for gaining value in PPR leagues, it's White. Though last year he was pretty irrelevant in all formats. I say pretty irrelevant because he was still a top 45 running back in PPR. Over the last three years, White finished 15, 11, and six spots higher in PPR formats than standard ones. If Mac Jones takes over as the starting quarterback, White's role will certainly see a bump in value, especially in PPR formats. Coming in at number seven, it's Robbie Anderson. Anderson doesn't become a superstar in PPR formats, but he certainly gets a mild bump. We saw last year that he was no longer used as a down the field threat like he was with the Jets, but instead more as a possession receiver with Carolina. Now with Curtis Samuel gone and old friend Sam Darnold under center, Anderson is likely to be closer to the version of himself that we saw in the first five games when he had 36 receptions than the final 11 games when he had just 59. It's not gonna be a crazy jump, but Anderson will be a better option in PPR leagues than other formats. Next up, we can't ignore the tight end position, and the first tight end clocking in is Noah Fan. There's an easy way to spot a player who's going to be a better PPR option than not, when he has a bunch of targets, but doesn't score a lot of touchdowns. That was Noah Fant last year. 93 targets, only three touchdowns. This year, it's unlikely that Fant's touchdown production is gonna go up significantly, given the return of Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy's likely progression. But, and especially if it's Teddy Bridgewater under center, Vance should still see plenty of targets, especially in the short area. Vance a fine option in any format this year, but particularly in PBR leagues. Checking in next is Sterling Shepard. Look, Shepard is not a great option at all this year. Let's just get that out of the way. With the addition of Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Toney, as well as the health of Saquon Barkley, there just isn't that much room for production elsewhere. But most Giants players will look better in PPR formats, considering that Daniel Jones threw just 11 touchdowns last year. So these receivers mostly get value from their catches and yards, not the end zone. Regardless of competition, Shepard has seen at least six targets in 28 of his last 30 games. That is pretty remarkable. Even with that pace likely to dip, he's still almost certainly going to be more valuable in PPR formats than others. Next up is a pretty obvious candidate, and that's Austin Eckler. Despite missing six full games and a portion of others, Eckler managed to finish as the RB26 last year in PPR formats. He's probably going to see roughly 100 targets or close to it this season, making him almost certainly a truly elite back in PPR. In standard formats, Eckler retains plenty of value, of course. But absent those extra points he tallies for receptions, he's more like a strong RB2 rather than a mid-range RB1 like he is in PPR. Next up, let's talk about my personal spirit animal in Logan Thomas. It's a shame that Washington added a lot of new faces to their offense this season because it did seem like we were on our way to have another top-tier tight end. 
Thomas finished as the number three tight end in PPR formats. You did not mishear me. Third. He saw 110 targets last year, and his role was only growing as he got a grasp on the offense. Washington has added Curtis Samuel and Diami Brown, but Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be slinging it, so Thomas should again see plenty of targets and a boost in PPR formats. Next up, let's head out to Cincinnati and talk about Tyler Boyd. Naturally, you're going to see a lot of slot-heavy receivers who benefit from PPR formats. Boyd is no different. With Jamar Chase added to the wide receiver core alongside T. Higgins, it's only going to magnify Boyd's slot-heavy role and continue to boost him in PPR formats. He's not going to see the high target share that he has as the clear-cut number three option in that offense, but still, he is worth much more in PPR formats. And the number one player who gains value in PPR formats is Naeem Hines. When you see a running back have nearly as many targets as he does carries, he's going to be more valuable in PPR formats. There were a few big games that carried his year-end finish, but Hines finished as the RB15 in PPR formats last year and the RB24 in standard formats, which is just a massive, massive jump. Hines could very well be the new age version of James White, as he's the primary passing down back in this offense who doesn't get a whole lot of work on the ground. That's going to do it for our top 10 players who gain value in PPR formats. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you think I missed anybody. In the meantime, make sure you're subscribed to us here at youtube.com slash fantasypros. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at fantasypros.